I'm here with Patrick Sunshim, one of the most um, successful entrepreneurs really in all of healthcare, and particularly in pharma and biotech. Um, inventor of a drug called Abraxane, which now belongs to somebody else, Celgene, but is, is doing very well, with some impressive results in pancreatic cancer. And he has some new projects he's willing to talk about. So Patrick, can you give, a, give us an idea of what Nantworks is, this new company that you're... Yeah, so Nantworks is really an offshoot. I don't know if you recall, Matt, during the time when we had a company called Abraxas Bioscience. Right. Embedded in there, I created a thing called Abraxas Health. Right. And the vision there was, I began to see around 2005, as Abraxane was getting approved for breast cancer and the results was coming through lung cancer, melanoma, and pancreatic cancer. There's this whole concept of molecular-based targeted uh, treatment and personalized medicine. is not only real, it's really upon us. And so it was incumbent on me to sort of create an infrastructure that could accommodate not only genomics, but what I want to talk about, so mm -hmm. called proteomics, which allow actionable information at point of care. Now that sounds simple, uh, but there was no infrastructure, there was no ability to take what they consider breakthrough science into the delivery And, and by system. infrastructure, what are we talking about here? We're talking about patient records, connectivity between them, and what kind of infrastructure do you need to make this work? So that's exactly what I, I was beginning to see. There was this complete disorganization and fragmentation of what we call healthcare. The information that's in these most amazing, innovative scientific bodies couldn't get into the hands of the delivery system rapidly enough to make an outcome available for persons about to die. When you're in the delivery system, the specialist, the primary care physician, the clinic, the hospital, there was no transfer of not only knowledge, but no transfer of information. And in the payment system, the payment system wouldn't pay for something that is not approved. So there was a complete disconnect. So we needed to figure out a way where we could have a fluidity of movement of information that is as complex as your genomic profile and as simple as your heart rate and your blood pressure and it, where all this information could be following the patient, no matter where they are, whether in the clinic, home, or hospital. So what have you done to, I mean, what do you build? That sounds great, Patrick, but that's, that's a lot of stuff that our disorganized system doesn't have. Correct. And, and, and unless somebody went out and built that, but from a domain expertise of knowing what needed to be built. So the first thing we need to do is have what we call wireless connectivity meaning when your blood pressure is taken, when your heart rate is taken, when your temperature is taken, whether you're in the home or in the hospital, that information could seamlessly go up into the cloud and actually populate the health record. We've done that. We now have 200 hospitals in which we've connected hundreds of medical devices. And this year we'll be capturing three billion vital signs into the cloud, automatically populating the electronic medical records. If you go from the hospital into the home, we need a way in which you, doctor, you could create literally an ICU at home where your oxygen level, your blood pressure, your heart rate, your glucose collected, sent into the cloud. We've now done that. We needed a way where we could interconnect a cancer patient, whether the patient goes from the clinic to the x-ray to the hospital and back home and knowing what drug for the patient to take. We now have three million cancer patients connected in this way across the United States. And are these are these pilot programs or are they customers of yours? How does this? I mean, what are you what are you selling? I mean, we know the healthcare system doesn't take up things that it really needs you to be selling something in order for it to adopt anything, right? Yeah, and that was the problem, right? So, they, they, how do you sell infrastructure for a need um, that there isn't? So that's exactly where we had I had the benefit of the philanthropy as well mm -hmm. as my funding this little program called Nantworks. So I, I realized then by 2005, this Abraxas Health, as mm -hmm. I said, was embedded inside uh, Abraxas Bioscience. I needed to restart. So I had the luxury of having sold ADP and, and, and mm -hmm. Abraxas um, and freed myself around 2010 to devote my, my, my entire last four or five years to building this. So I literally funded this myself. I funded it built the companies, built the organization. For example, there's 12,000 miles of fiber across the country called the National Lambda Rail. Mm -hmm. It's connected to every college. I funded that 
connected every cancer center to that in, ca and, uh, in terms of genomic sequencing. Funded and built a supercomputer that now can stream genomic data to the supercomputer just like a Netflix movie. Right. And we've now done, um, the we are now have the largest genomic cancer library in the world. We are collecting genomes at the rate of a thousand a month. Um, and we can now do the genomic analysis, which normally takes 11 weeks in 47 seconds. So this is now real, uh, and this is now an entity within this entity called Nant Health that will be able to bring what we call evidence-based genomic molecular-based care to both the doctor and the patient in real time. And how are they, they going to access it? Is it a product? Is it a so that's what we begin to launch under this banner called Nant Health. Uh -huh. And within Nant Health, we were going to create the world's first cloud-based, bi-directional, touchscreen, uh, medical record connectivity system that connects wirelessly all your blood pressure, your heart rate. So is it a new EMR, or does it connect the existing ones? It, it does both. So we wouldn't, be able to, we wouldn't need to rip and replace. And if you don't have an EMR, it would be a, a system that uh, is cloud-based. If you have a current EMR, which is the EMRs across the nation, it would actually be the middleware that would be able to integrate information, whether it be your blood pressure, heart rate, x-rays, CAT scans, genomic information, payment systems. So what we've done is created, a, as I said, an infrastructure, a fluid medical information highway that is scalable and available uh, to the nation and to the globe. But more importantly, it now brings what I think is breakthrough technologies in terms of medical science to the patient today in real time. Um, and I think I'm most, most anxious about that because we now have pancreatic cancer patients who are completely free of disease after having metastasis for five years. The question is why? Why are those patients uh, having this fortunate um, outcome, and we believe we are, have great insights into that why, and that why re requires very um, high supercompute analysis of genomic and proteomic data, which requires infrastructure for that to be sent rapidly back and forth between doctor and patient.